Good evening, and in this UV Packmaster tutorial, I would like to present a new useful feature which was recently added to the packer, auto repackaging. Now you'll see that this feature will significantly speed up your workflow. So, so using the auto repacking feature, you can configure any number of objects in your blend file for UV map repacking, then repack all of them at the same time using a single clip operation. Let me show you. So this here, this is the model that we're going to use and that we've used across a lot of tutorials. And as you can see, it consists of a whole bunch of meshes. Now to configure an object for auto repacking, simply click on the object in the outliner. So I'm just going to select the arrow. And at the moment we're in the 3D viewport and we've got UV Packmaster up here and here we've got this option. Now this is important to understand that UV Packmaster, the actual tool set is over here in the UV editing. But for now, we're just going to be looking at this panel here. And obviously to bring it up, you press N to bring up the side panel. And that's where it's sitting. So in order to enable auto repacking, just click on it to enable. And then we can press add UV map to repack and we'll click on UV map. So just take note if we come over down into object data, you might see that there might be multiple UV maps. Here, there's only the one. But if we wanted to add another UV map, I can press the plus symbol, and then I can click on add UV map to repack, and then we've got UV map 001. Now, obviously, auto repacking allows multiple objects. So if I were to click on body, just for presentation's sake, click enable auto repacking, add UV map to repack, UV map, and now I'm ready to show you the repackaging feature in action. So now we can jump over UV editing, click on the O button, which is for other tools, funnily enough. And then we're gonna find the auto repacking tool. And so in order to package all the UV maps, you just need to click auto repack. So the cool thing about that was, is I actually didn't have anything selected. It took all the enable auto repackaging that I've enabled, and then it's done everything in one go. So we can see the summary down here. Let's press escape. And we can see that by default, the add-on didn't even show me the results of packing UV maps. And that's just to speed up the workflow. Now we can change that, but we'll talk about that later. So if I were to go into our body and our arrow, well actually we'll just look at our body first and press tab to go into edit mode. You can see how cleanly that has repackaged those UVs. Now, if we went into the arrows, tab into edit mode, gorgeous. And then if I actually select the first one, you can see that there's actually no change in UV maps. And that's because it's repackaged the UVs as optimal as possible. So that's why both of these UV maps look exactly the same. So now if I just go back into object mode, and if I do auto repack again, you can see that the packer didn't repack any of the maps. All the map statuses are up to date. And that's because the auto repack feature by default remembers the last input used by the operation, and that's per UV map. So it knows not to redo that calculation. So the question is now, what the operation input consists of? The most obvious thing is if we do a change to the UV map, okay? So if one modifies any part of the UV map by adding or removing UVs, or changes the coordinates of the UV map, the UV map will the UV map will be repackaged next time the operation is run. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of these points and let's go into vertex mode. I'm going to press G, just move it out of the way. You know what? No, no, no. Let's, I'm just going to move it a little bit and auto repack. And you can see in the summary that the packer detected the body UV map was modified since the last time it ran. And that's why it was repacked. Awesome. And we can see that the other two have stayed up to date because we didn't touch them. So a UV map is the first component of the operation input. Okay, the second component is the packer options used during the operation. So if we change the packer option, it will also make all affected UV maps repackaged. So by default, the features use all the options in the packing multi-panel over here. So let's change an option. Uh, for example, I will check um, flipping enabled. And then when I go back into the repacking tool, auto repack, we can see that all configured UV maps have been repackaged. And that's simply because I changed an option 
which was used to repack all the maps. Now that's an important thing to remember. All configured UV maps use the same set of packaging options provided in the packing multi-panel tool. And I guess what some of you would like to ask at this moment, what if I would like to use a distinct set of packaging options during the auto repackaging per object or UV map? Okay, the answer is yeah, you can do it. Totally doable. All you have to do is enable option sets in the given blend file. So I'm gonna click on preferences and then down the bottom here, enable set option set. So just keep in mind that it is a scene scoped option. So if you switch to another blend file or another scene in the same blend file, it will revert back to its default value. And that is it being disabled. Okay, so a couple of words about the option set feature as it might be quite useful even when you don't use the, the auto packaging function. So now when I go back into the packing multi-panel, you might have noticed that there's a new part in the UI displayed at the very top. And that was after we enabled these. Now the idea behind the option set is simple. Within a single blend file, you can maintain any number of option configurations, assign an informative name to them, as well as quickly switch between configurations, okay? So by default, there is only one option set in the scene and that's called world option set. So by pressing the plus sign, I can add in another option set to the scene and a new set was created, option set 001, and it is now the active set, okay? So let's just rename it to my option set arrow, sweet. And then I can now browse between the both of the options. So let's just switch back to the first one and we'll rename it to like my, oops. We'll rename it to like my option set body. And editing options, the active set is straightforward. You just need to remember that the option values currently displayed in the UI are assigned to the active option set. So let's do some distinct options for the active set. So let's, so let's set the pack mode from single tile down to tiles, and then the X and Y count to two. Ah, no, just go X. And also enable the pixel margin, and we'll set the margin to 40. And then we'll switch over to the arrow one, and you'll see that the UI doesn't show these changes anymore. Okay, and that's because it's now displaying the options for the arrow set, which is completely independent from the other one. Um, what I will do though, is I will enable the pixel margin and we'll set it to 10. And then I'm gonna press the plus sign again, and we'll call this my option set arrow to enable pixel margin and set border margin to 50. And then let's let's kind of go a little bit further with this. Okay, so. We're talking about the options set in context of auto repacker here, but note that this set may also be useful during the usual packer usage. So the point is that the packer will always use the option from the current active set when you run the usual packer operations. So option sets allow one to quickly switch between the different option configurations during manual packing. So for a quick demonstration, let's select one of the other objects like the bracer, for instance. Let's go into edit mode. And then if I were to go mm, pack now, and then this is the result we get. Now, if we quickly switch to the body set and then we click pack again, we can see that this is the result. It's packed across two tiles as that is the configuration that we did. So anyway, let's get back to the original topic. Okay, the auto repacking with different options per UV maps. Now, we have configured, we have configured the last step now we have the last configuration step left to do. Um, and that's to marry our newly created option sets with the auto repackaging configuration. So for that, let's go select our arrow and we can look at our auto packing UI, repackaging UI. And as you can see, we've got option sets enabled. So we can now select an option set to use independently for every UV map configured for repackaging. Okay, so the first map, Let's go set arrow. And then for the second one, let's use arrow two. And then for the body, I'll select mm, body. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go to other tools, auto repack, 
Check out the summary. Now it's also displaying the option name set, which was used to pack a given UV map. Now I could manually start showing you how every particular map was packed using different packaging options, but it's way easy to do it like this. Now it's a good moment to introduce you to other options for auto repackaging. So we could do show results. And then if I do auto repack, and what happens now is this time auto repack pauses the operation after every UV map process, shows the UV map in the editor and waits for the user to press space. So if I press space, goes to the next one, press space again, goes to the next one. That's pretty cool. And if we come down into the bottom here and have a look, we can see it's all up to date because we previously ran it. And that's because I didn't touch the UVs, none of the options were changed, so it all just came through. So the last tip I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how you can actually force a UV map to be repackaged, even if it's up to date. So you can do this two ways. First, you can enable force repackaging globally in the auto repack menu. I've got to press escape and then do it again. There we go. Tick. And so this will force all the configured UV maps in the scene to be repackaged. But you can also enable force repackaging on a per object basis in the object panel, object options panel. And so I'm going to select the body. And with this one, it's going to be force repacking. But we'll notice on the arrows, it's not there. So now if we do auto repack, I love that repacking force. So as you can see in summary, so even though we didn't touch anything in the UV, it still forced that repackaging. Love it. <laughs> so that's all I wanted to show in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out new tutorials. Have a good evening and bye-bye.